Welcome back to the eCitizen 4 live recorded tutorial and now we're going to continue and in this video I'm going to show you to start off how to save 3D images so you can put them into a presentation and also how to save your 2D drawing and we're going to start by saving 3D images we're going to click on the 3D button and go into 3D and we're in the 3D and to save images you simply align the camera the way you want it and then you click on the camera button up here which is blue then you select the image resolution and you can select all the way up to 4000 pixels and to save a photo you click on one of the options and it's going to save uh, you'll be able to save it to your computer and we'll call this test image 3 and save and it's going to tell you when the image is saved and it's all done offline so you don't have to be connected to the internet when saving the images and the final images will actually look more crisp and have more details such as floor reflections window reflections if you had mirrors in the layout you would have mirror reflections so it's really cool and works really fast and to take more photos you simply align the camera again and click the camera button and save your images so you can save as many images as you want. Okay, we'll close that, 3D. And now let's say I wanna print this 2D drawing. Then I go to the print button here and it's gonna load a preview of my layout. And you select the name for your drawing. You can add free text, any text here, like your address, for example. And you have two rows for that. Then you can enter your copyright information and also select the logo type and I already have a logo type down here but you click the button and select the logo type if you want to do that then we have various options here in terms of how we want our drawing to look like for example now we're seeing the floor colors but I can click on hide floor color and take that away and we have a white background and currently I have no measurements so if I want to bring in the gap measurements I click on that if I want to show my wall measurements I can bring that in etc so you you customize it any way you want and when you're ready you click on print drawing to send it to your printer or click on save as image and you save the drawing as a an image file so it's really easy okay now we're going to continue by adding some more uh, information into this layout and we're going to go to the next tab the fourth tab called labels labels allow me to add text information into the 2d drawing so we're going to click on create label and we'll see a text here your text here but now i can type in anything i want main area perhaps and i can move that text around i can change the size of the text if i want to do that and just place it wherever i want and you can add another text just by clicking the create label again and do the same operation when we're in labels i'm also able to activate something called show object number and when i click on that each object will have a number displayed to it and you can move these numbers around and position them exactly the way you want and what it is it's a number that will correlate with a bill of material list a part list that you can print so if i go back to that print option and we'll turn on show object numbers we can make those larger if we want we see those here we can hide the gap measurements so it's very clear we see the numbers and then I can print my drawing of course but I can print the part list and here it lists all the equipment in my layout and by default all the generic items like the lounge chair the glass table here will be unmarked because I most often don't want that on my final part list or bill of material but when you've done that you can unmark and mark whatever you want you click OK and you'll be able to save as a PDF a complete bill of material and that bill of material has the number that we saw in our layout cancel the print the number and also the quantity and the name of the products. So it's really good, this bill of material or part list. So it can help your customer or someone who's doing the installation of this final uh, 
final work on site, for example. Okay, we'll hide the object numbers for now. And now we're going to have a look at what we call custom objects. And custom objects are really cool. We used to call them primitives in older easy design versions. Custom objects allows you to build your own objects. And there are a list of different options here. And the first one we're going to look at is floor. And in the past here, in our work, we created our rooms and we changed the floor options. And sometimes you want to create some special flooring and then you can use floor. And then you go into the layout and you simply left mouse click as many times as you want to create a shape. That zone will then be green and I can readjust it any way I want. And like I said, I could have added as many nodes as I wanted. Then it will appear a menu here and I can change uh, the altitude and the thickness of this floor. I can also change its smoothness. So if I use that smoothness tool, you'll see how it turns into round shape and you can adjust it any way you want and uh, then I can select the floor material instantly and just pick any color and place on that floor and in 3d we'll be going straight into on top of that and we have it right there just my custom floor shape there it's really cool okay We'll click on it and press the delete key. And the delete key is used to remove any object in Easy Design. Now I want to add a floor poster and wall poster. You remember in the beginning we added a big image to an entire wall, but you have the option of also adding smaller posters. So I'm going to click on poster and then I'm just going to hold down my left mouse button and drag out a line like this. And it can be any length. Then I'm going to Rotate it because you see the arrow show facing the proper way. And then I'm just going to place it on the wall here. Now, in my object menu, I can readjust that size if I want to make it larger, four meters and maybe two meters high. And then set the altitude if I want to do that. Finally, I click on material and we'll select a custom image again. Let's pick this image and click use. And now, We'll go into 3D. I'm just going to rotate the camera and you'll see that wall poster right there. So it's really simple. You just drag out and add your material. Of course, in 3D, if you want, you can click on move edit objects and we can alter the height if we want to do that or position of it. We'll close and now we'll add a floor image. So I'm going to click on floor image and in the middle here I'm gonna hold down and drag out a box like this and once again if I wanted I could change the dimensions two by two maybe and then we'll go to all and we'll add an image and once again you can add any image what's really cool is that it supports uh, PNG textures so if you have a PNG logo like a transparent background you can place that in and it's gonna look great but in this case, we're just going to add uh, that image. And you see it directly there. And if we go into 3D, you'll see that we place it on the floor over here. If we back up right here. Very simple. OK, we'll click Delete and remove that one. And we'll actually remove the poster as well. Uh, if I want, I can add mirrors. So we're going to click on Mirror. Hold down left mouse button and just drag out a line. And once again, if you want to change the dimensions of it, you can do that. And but we're just gonna well, we'll raise it up one meter. And we'll take the camera and we'll go into that second room directly in 3D. And mirror reflection is not showing as a default in 3D. And that's because it's very uh, heavy in terms of graphics. But once you save that final image, it's going to add a mirror reflection to it. So it's really simple, really cool. And once again, if you wanted, you could alter the height, of course, or position. Perfect. We'll close that. And now we'll do cylinder. Cylinder is just dragging out a cylinder box, uh, cylinder object like that. 
and you can change its dimensions and uh, so maybe I want uh, the length to be hmm, let's make it four meters and we'll make it a little bit thinner one decimeter and if I want I can add a material to it we'll do a color just like that and we'll do another one as well we'll do box at the same time sorry we'll do a box same thing maybe use as a pillar in the room or something like that height we'll do it four meters and then on the box I can select new images on any side or colors you can cus really customize it but I'm gonna select the same color on all sides like that and we'll go into 3d and now we're actually in that other room so we have to move back in and there we go one cylinder and one box and those we can move if we want okay we'll make a lasso and we move those and then we have stairs so for example if I wanted stairs out here I could click on stairs drag out a line like this and let's say I want it to go this way I can change the materials the altitude and the color from the list here if I want it but we're just gonna go in as default and let's take that camera and I'm not even gonna change its altitude because I'm gonna do that while we're in the live 3d so now it's at level here but if we click the edit object option we'll click on the stairs altitude and we'll lower it down and if we want we can adjust it even further let's position it properly perfect okay that was stairs and now we'll remove that stairs just to have a clean area here and we'll remove the text as well just to clean it out even further the final custom object is called path and it allows me to create like a, a floor path and I'm gonna left mouse click over here to start and then I can click as many times as I want and create any shape you can click a lot of times like this just to make it really nice and curved or just make straight simple changes we'll stop right there it's kind of a funny looking shape but you can grab a hold of each section and readjust them the way you want them and we can select the material and change its altitude width etc we'll click on material select that green color again I must be liking that and then if you went into 3d we would see our own floor path in 3d there so it's really cool and uh, okay we're gonna remove the path and we're gonna have a look at the next option here and we'll go to cameras and as a default you have one camera this one right here camera zero it's called currently but I can click on it and select a new name maybe main view and then I'm gonna add another camera so I'm gonna click on create camera and we'll position it over here let's call that simply side view if we go into 3d now we'll be able to jump in between two cameras so this is my first camera but if I click on the play button here we have that side view camera as well and back to main view and if you want if you're not happy with the current position you can position it like this and click on set camera you see set camera click and it saves so now when we go to main view and back to side view it remembers that that new position okay excellent we'll close that and now we're gonna look at another tab called measuring and measuring allows me to drag out like a tape measurement and see distances in my layout here so for example click on create measuring then I left mouse click over here and drag out a line and click again if I want to change that I can hold down my left mouse button and just redrag it to new position if you want another measurement simply click create measuring maybe start measuring from here to over here and you get a new measurement and like I said if you wanted to readjust it just hold down left mouse button and do that okay if you want to remove those press delete press delete remember the measurements are only shown in the 2d not in the 3d yet 
All right, we're at the final tab and it's called My Objects. It's actually one of my favorites uh, because it allows me to create my own catalog of favorite groups of objects. Actually, you can save just one object here, but we're gonna make Lasso and save a number of objects together as a group. And that group in My Objects tab, I can drag out in a future project. So you can save big installations. So it works like this. You make, a, or I make a lasso around these three cross trainers. Then I can click on save as my object. We'll click on that. And we'll call this three cross trainers. You select any name and click OK. That will create a thumbnail in my objects library here. And I can simply hold down my left mouse button and drag that group out. And I say group because once you've created a My Objects uh, group like this, as default, it's a group. But I can once again go up and click on the group button and deactivate that group. So, for example, if I'm doing a fitness layout like we're doing now, and I've created a circuit training area or functional zone or anything, and I think that's a good setup, Make a lasso when you're standing in My Objects and save it as your object, and you can use that in a future project. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to continue with another video, and uh, I hope you're enjoying this so far and you're learning a lot. And okay, thank you very much.